Hey guys, in this video, I am going to give you six ways to judge a prophetic word that you've heard online today. Uh, why specifically online? Well, because it's easier to do in community when you're in a local church, but there are tons and tons of prophetic words that have been released online. Think of the 2020 prophecies, a year of blessing, stadiums full of souls being one to Christ, uh, and Trump will be president again. None of those things happened. It wasn't a year of blessing. There were no stadiums that had anyone in it. COVID happened, and Trump did not become president. Uh, has that caused the prophets to be weary of releasing prophetic words? Absolutely not. They've just doubled down and kept releasing more and more. In fact, I would argue that people are realizing how easy it is to blow up their social platform if they'll just release prophetic words. So as a charismatic, how do we look at these words and judge them in accordance with the scriptures, in accordance with other principles and practices, so that we can know whether this is the Lord or not? We don't want to despise the gifts. We don't want to despise prophecy. So how do we judge these things? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you how, uh, but before I do that, you're watching The Remnant Radio. My name is Joshua Lewis. Together with some of my buddies, we interview pastors and teachers from all over the world, from different churches and denominations. We produce long format content covering uh, church history, covering theology, and covering the gifts of the Spirit. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because we keep coming out with tons of content like that. But we also come out with short form content like this where we answer your questions. So if you have a question and, and you want a quick response to it, maybe drop it in the comment section of this video. Maybe we'll make a video uh, addressing your very question. Without further ado, let's dive in. Before I give you the six steps on how to judge prophetic words, I really want to encourage you. We really need to have the gift of discernment, and we need to exercise discernment when giving, when receiving uh, and giving prophetic words. Some will say, man, if you're not a prophet, you shouldn't judge prophetic words. Josh, you're not a prophet. Your audience aren't prophets. Y'all shouldn't be judging prophetic words. What they'll do is they'll run to 1 Corinthians 14, 29, which, by the way, is a debated text. It says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. Now, who are the others? Uh, many are going to argue that the others are other prophets. While yet many still will hold that it's maybe elders or others in the congregation. Uh, whether it's, it's prophets or not prophets, let's just go to a clear text that says that we're all supposed to judge prophecy. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 19 through 22. Uh, 5, 19 through 22 says, Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good and abstain from every form of evil. So you'll see clearly that the entire church is commanded to judge prophetic words. So knowing that, keeping that in mind, uh, let's dive into uh, the very first point. The first one is just kind of common sense. Is the prophetic word biblical? Is the contents of the prophetic word biblical? biblical. If someone gave a prophetic word to you as an individual and said, hey, uh, you should get a divorce, says the Lord, and you should go get remarried, says the Lord, you should slap the spirit of stupid right out of them because uh, the Bible clearly states that what God brings together, no man should separate. And this prophetic word isn't a prophecy at all. He isn't prophesying, they're prophet lying. Uh, this is not a prophetic word uh, if it lines, uh, uh, if it, if it t finds itself on the opposite line of scripture. Uh, we see in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16, that all of scripture Scripture is God breathed. The Holy Spirit partnered to co author the, the 66 books of this Bible. This is the infallible inspired Word of God. If someone else is prophesying uh, uh, through the work of the Spirit and it doesn't line up with the Holy Spirit's work, then it is not a prophetic word from the Holy Spirit. So, first, let's test the word. Is the word biblical. Uh, if someone gives a prophetic word over the nation, thus saith the Lord, I will not bring judgment, says God. Uh, I no longer bring judgment. I don't judge nations, and I do not possess wrath. Uh, what that is, is someone creating a system of theology and reading it into their prophetic word. Uh, the scriptures, again, that have been breathed out by God, clearly demonstrate that God is a just God who brings judgment and justice. So when looking at a prophetic word, the first thing I want you to do is judge and ask the question, is it biblical? Step two, does it come to pass? This is an important question when judging prophecy. We see this in Deuteronomy 18.22. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, uh, if the word does not come to pass, uh, uh, come pass or come true, uh, this is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. So again, throughout the scriptures, what you're going to see is that if prophetic words don't happen, they're not from God. 
Now, there are going to be people who flip out about this point, point number two. They're not going to like it. They're going to say there are tons of words in, in the Bible that don't happen to you know come to pass, and they're going to run to, to, to Jonah. You know, Jonah prophesied to Nineveh that God would destroy Nineveh. God didn't destroy Nineveh. It's like, yeah, but because God was being faithful to his word in Jeremiah 18, 8, where he said, and if the nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of disaster uh, that I intended to do to it. So people are going to say, you know, all prophetic words are conditional words. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible speaks of words of judgment and words of blessing over nations. If those words are given and the entire nation turns away or the entire nation turns back to God, he will relent of his disaster or he will pour out blessing or relent of pouring out his blessing. Okay. Uh, God is wellfully uh, within his right to reserve the blessing of a prophetic word or the curse of a prophetic word because of repentance or turning into wickedness. Okay. So the 2020 prophecies of Trump missing all of these prophetic words doesn't fall into that category. And frankly, many prophetic words do not fall into this category. Um, there are prophetic words that God gives. If they're true, they will come to pass, okay? Uh, there are very few exceptions. We read the exception that we have in Jeremiah 18, 8. Okay, so first one, is it biblical? Number two, does it come to pass? Uh, number three, is it so vague that it can't come to pass? Okay, this is a legitimate question. Okay, if someone says, this year is going to be a year of blessing. This year is going to be a, a, a year of trial. Well, well, yeah, every year is a year of trial. There's 365 days in the year. You're saying not in one day, you're not going to be tested, right? Uh, or, or then in 365 days that you're going to have a God who's not going to bless you, we'll give you air. You're, you're going to be blessed. You you serve the living God of the world. This is this is nonsensical. This is not a prophetic word. This is just a vague speech, okay? Oh, God's blessing. Oh, there's going to be difficulty. There's going to be red lights and green lights on the way to work. The sky is going to be blue. At no point at the end of that year can you fall on your face and say, whoa, the Lord has spoken to us, like fall on their face, declare God is surely among them. There's no wow. There's no awe. No, what is the fruit? This doesn't edify. This doesn't encourage. This doesn't embolden the body of Christ. Uh, if the word is just so vague, it can't come to pass, man, you should toss that word out. Uh, and, and the fourth one that I want to give you is the prophetic word that you're hearing true of all seasons at all times. For example, this year, the Lord just wants to win many souls to salvation. Yeah, he, he wanted to win many souls the year before, too. Actually, God wants to win souls every year. Uh, in fact, God has an immutable nature. Uh, he desires that none should perish, but come unto a knowledge of the truth, of saving grace in Jesus. Okay, why would we give a prophetic word that says God loves you? We have a Bible verse that says God loves you. Uh, now, we could give particular words to particular individuals, but I'm talking about YouTube prophecies. I'm talking about Facebook prophecies, prophetic words that aren't given to individuals, but given for nations. This is vague. Of course, that's going to apply to someone, right? Someone is going to be blessed. Someone is going to be edified by God loves you. But again, is this something that we can judge at the end of the year? Man, God loved us more this year than he did last year. God loved us more this year than he did two years ago and two years into the future? No, God's love is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So here are the rules that we're, we've gone through already. Is it biblical? Number two, uh, does it come to pass? Number three, is it so vague that you can't tell if it comes to pass? Number four, is it so vague that it's true of all times and all seasons? Number five, what is the doctrine of the prophet? This is a very important question right? Uh, there are tons of so-called prophets who have emerged throughout the years, throughout the centuries, men like Joseph Smith, uh, men like uh, Muhammad, who come and claim that Jesus was just a prophet and not the son of God. Another, Joseph Smith, will say that he's the brother of Satan and is one of many gods. These both, both of these men have bad Christology, and because they don't profess the God of the Bible, should not be recognized. We see this clearly in 1 John chapter 4, 2 through 3. It says, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confess that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and is now already in the world. So you'll see that if people are preaching falsehoods about Jesus, man, you should you should avoid that person greatly. But also, not, not just Christology, but the larger Orthodox Christian faith. Is it within 
orthodoxy. Uh, we'll see this in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 14, 37 through 38. Uh, the apostle Paul says, if anyone thinks he is a prophet or is spiritual, he should acknowledge the things that I'm writing are the commandments of the Lord. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. We don't recognize you as a prophet if you don't submit yourself to the apostolic witness and the apostolic teaching of the scriptures. Okay, so uh, number one, is it biblical, right? Number two, does it come to pass? Number three, is it so vague that you can't tell if it comes to pass? Number four, is it always true of all seasons everywhere? Number five, what is the doctrine of that prophet? And number six, what is the character of that prophet? We see this throughout the scriptures, but one of the places it's most plainly read is Matthew uh, chapter 7, 15 through 16, where Jesus tells us to beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You shall know them by their fruit. Okay, on the outside, they look fluffy and nice, but on the inside, they're evil and wicked, and they want to consume the body of Christ. Uh, we know, uh, uh, what, what's the fruit of the Spirit here? Some are going to say it's the prophetic words themselves. Some say uh, it's the, the conduct. I think that the kind of inner working where he says uh, sheep outside, wolf on the inside, speaks to the character of the individual. Uh, but if you disagree with my interpretation here, just run uh, to Galatians chapter 5, where it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians 5, if, I mean, if you're given a prophetic word by the Spirit, we should at least see the Spirit's fruit in your life, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, uh, against which there is no law. We see this clearly laid out in the Scriptures. Uh, we want to make sure that those who are ministering among the body are the ones who have care character that are faithful. So so if they're out there and they're stealing money, they're busted for for abusing, manipulating people. If you see them out there giving prophetic words and never repenting for the words that they have missed, these are not men or women you want to follow. Is it biblical? Did it come to pass? Is it so vague we'll never know if it came to pass? Uh, is the prophetic word true of all times and all seasons? Is the prophet uh, have an, does he have an orthodox Christian uh, profession of faith? And, and finally, what's the character of that prophet? Those things are going to help you right now start to discern uh, the wheat from the tares, if you will, uh, the, the solid prophetic words for some of the wacky prophetic words. And you might notice that point five and six seem uh, to require a bit of investigation, a bit of in, uh, introspection into the lives of these prophetic people. It's the reason I really believe prophetic ministry belongs inside of the local church and if is released on YouTube, it needs to go through a, a, a very strenuous process of approval. I would love to see prophets begin to release words saying, uh, hey guys, uh, this is uh, uh, my name. Uh, this is the church I go to. I submitted this word to my elders. We've been praying about it for a long time. We feel like it's really the Lord to release this word. Uh, and if this falls flat on its face, this is my leadership. Feel free to reach out to them. Uh, you know, that kind of system would create an immense amount of accountability online, which I'm a big fan of. So so in that regards, if there isn't doctrine that said, hey, this is what I believe and this is where I go to church and and, and, and they'll be able to give a voucher for my, my integrity, do that yourself. If you really believe that, hey, that prophetic word, it was able to get through one through four and I felt like it was good. Uh, let me check out five and six, write an email. Hey brother, you know, do you have a statement of faith that I can look at? What church do you go to? I'd love to, I'd love to reach out to your church, get to little, know a little bit about you as I'm trying to judge this prophetic word. I think those things take a little bit of extra action, but man, it would really help us police and live a life of integrity inside of the charismatic movement. I hope this video uh, was edifying to you today. I hope it blessed you. If you want to watch us walk through prophetic words that have been posted online as we go through this six-step model ourselves. Here's a playlist you can go check out, uh, or we have a playlist here on the gifts of the Spirit if you want to learn more about the gifts of the Spirit. Additionally, if you want to learn, man, ways to hear from God, we just published an ebook that's free online. Uh, there's a link in the description. You can click that and download that book today. Uh, but for the rest of you, uh, man, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and share it around if you found it that it was edifying to you. Blessings, guys. See you next time.